channel or welcome back to my channel. My name is Andy, sometimes Mouse, and I talk about books and book related things. And today I'm going to be telling you about my romance recommendations as someone who does not like to read romance. Now, I will also disclaim that all of this is sapphic romance because not only do I not enjoy reading romance, I don't read straight romance ever because it's just not for me. I am someone who identifies on the ace arrow. Ar ar <laughs> spectrum as well as someone who is bisexual so I know you probably don't need my background but I think that it kind of helps to give an explanation of some of the things that I'm talking about and why I feel the way that I do about romances so a few weeks ago I read only romance for about two weeks and it was interesting it was really interesting so prior to that video I Prior to those two vlogs, um, I did not go out of my way to read romance because I simply didn't enjoy it. I thought that I didn't enjoy it, um, but what I mostly found was that the reason I don't enjoy romance is the same reason that I don't, as a rule, enjoy adult fiction in general, and that is that the pacing sucks and I hate all the characters. I think that most of the characters' problems would be solved if they just went to therapy. And that holds true to um, adult romances just as it does to adult fantasy, so you know, at least I am consistent. I will say I also don't particularly like the contemporary genre that much, I find it slow paced and boring. And again, everyone could go to therapy and would be better off. And so fantasy tends, or not fantasy, romance tends to be in either, so it's romance as a main genre, but then it's subgenres are usually contemporary or historical, both of which I don't enjoy. So it's a little bit tricky to find something that I'll like. <laughs> With all of that said, if you are someone like me who doesn't really like romance, or you really want romance that's good enough that I enjoyed it, here is my recommendations. I'm going to start with books that are what I would class as less smut, but does not mean they are completely smut free. I have horrible memory and generally skip those chapters, so to more smut, right? Alright, so let's get that show on the road. First we have The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo by Taylor Jenkins Reid. This is an adult historical fiction. Uh, in this book we learn the story of um, Evelyn Hugo and we learn the um, history of Evelyn Hugo and all of her husbands and why she's had so many and it turns out that it's because she has been queer this whole time. And that's not like a twist, everyone knows this book is sapphic, I hope, at this point, that everyone knows this book is sapphic. I really, really enjoyed this book. This was one of the first uh, contemporary romances that I had read, much less a historical book that I had read and genuinely enjoyed, and I was impressed by this book. The story is heart-wrenching, and it hurts your feelings, and you, you just feel very invested in the characters and the development over time, and I think that that's amazing, and uh, the way the story unfolds for you is, is just really beautifully done and was written very well. So if you like, um, you know, think like older, old Hollywood vibes, um, secret lovers kind of thing, and then like, mm, like gossip or tell-all old Hollywood stuff. You would like The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo. The next is She Drives Me Crazy by Kelly Quindlin. This is a young adult book. It is an enemies to lovers book and I really liked this book because it talks about the different uh, reasons behind, motivations behind why people do certain things, um, why people want to be popular. It also though really really addresses toxic relationships in high school in a way that I felt was done incredibly well and that's why I've included it on this list because a lot of the time we include toxic relationships but we're usually praising them and I don't agree with that I don't think that that's good especially in a young adult book and I think that it's healthy for young adults to one get sapphic books at all and then two to get to read them and see what a toxic sapphic relationship would look like and then what a non-toxic sapphic relationship would look like. This is one of the books that I find myself just randomly thinking about and to me that really indicates that it was a good book. Then we have Honey and Ishu's Guide to Fake Dating by Adiba J uh, Jagadar. I did research on how to 
pronounce her last name, um, but I do struggle. We've talked about this. I struggle uh, with pronunciations. That is part of my neurodivergency. So just that disclaimer, I did do the research. I try. Sometimes my brain just shuts down. I have other books by this author or another book by this author, uh, which I would also recommend, but I ran out of space on this list. Um, but this is a fake dating kind of enemies to lovers book. And first off, the cover is absolutely beautiful. And second, it is just a really fun story and the way that everything came together in the end just made me really happy and I couldn't put it, I didn't stop listening to that book. It was something that I literally listened to all the way through, started to finish all day. Like I, it was a Saturday and I was cleaning and I just never stopped listening to it. And the fact that I remember it down to that point means that it, it was a really good book. Our reasoning behind the fake dating is just kind of humorous to me and I just, found the whole thing a really fun read and the way that things are addressed again much like she drives me crazy was um just really really good then we have the falling in love montage by um kiera smith sierra smith kiera smith this is another young adult book in this book our main character um meets this girl and she's like i'm not gonna fall in love okay thanks bye but the girl is like really into um rom-coms and so they make the decision to follow a romantic comedy like playbook basically uh for one whirlwind summer of romance and the goal is to just do all of those things and then not be in love by the end of it and go on their separate ways because they're each going to different places at the end of the summer I thought that the way that this book handled some more tricky family dynamics was really sweet and I also just really enjoyed the characters down to even the side characters and there's a lot of the time where I just don't like side characters um, and this was not one of them. I really like this author's writing in general. She has another book that I have enjoyed and um, so I would highly recommend this one. And then we have The Dark Wife by Sarah Diemer. This is an adult a uh, fiction book, this fantasy book, this is a, about um, Persephone and Hades. It's a retelling where Hades is a woman. And I know a lot about this specific myth for some reason. Pro I'm gonna say because of Lore Olympus, actually. I'm gonna say that that's probably why. I know a lot about this specific myth. Uh, and I really really like it. I like it conceptually. I find it really interesting and the way that the many many ways that people have retold this story over and over again I found I find really amazing and this is no exception to the rule. It is a really fun tale. Now I will give trigger warnings for you know sexual assault and that kind of thing in the book but it is it's got Zeus in it and I feel like if you mention that you can just go ahead and assume that that's probably going to come up especially in an adult novel. I There is some smut, but not a lot because I read it with my eyes. I was able to skip over it. If you are not, if you're somebody who doesn't like smut, then you also can do that because I'm not sure if there's an audiobook, but I did read it as an ebook on Scribd. So also it's on Scribd if you want to read it. And then we have Perfect Rhythm by Jay. This was a book that was recommended to me specifically for my romance reads. All of the ones that I've previously mentioned were not mentioned were not recommended to me by my romance read stuff but this one was recommended to me and then also my friend Alicia specifically reached out and was like Jay is one of my favorite authors so uh I liked this book a lot and what I also liked was that before the chapter there's a warning that's like hey there's going to be sex in the next chapter if you don't want to listen to it or in this chapter if you don't want to listen to it skip it that's all that's in this chapter and I think that that's really well done because you can really want to read a romance without wanting to hear, you know, their sex stories. So, you know, very grateful for that explanation and, and for that situation. And I liked this book for its ace representation, especially as someone who is just now sort of figuring out where I fit on that spectrum and how I fit on that spectrum. I think that it did a really good job of kind of explaining some things. And I think that because our one of our main characters is not on that spectrum and doesn't know anything about it it's kind of that learning experience this is also an age gap romance everyone's over the age of 18 nobody is like a student teacher relationship it's nothing like that but it is an age gap romance so just fair warning for that but it is like a rock star has to come back home because her dad has a stroke and her dad and her don't have a good relationship but you know you come back home for your parents sometimes and uh a person she grew up with who was just a kid when she 
last remembered her is actually her dad's caretaker and then this romance kind of builds off of that and I found the whole thing really uh like the town itself very like Schitt's Creek energy I don't know if that makes sense but it was very Schitt's Creek energy and that's kind of what my brain was like pinging the whole time I was listening to it this book is also on Scribd so if you want to read it listen to it it's on Scribd it's available to you I have a link down below that you can click that would you know give you access to it so that's all of my less smut recommendations I am now going to be moving on to my more smutty recommendations so for my more smutty recommendations we are gonna start with a dowry of blood by ST Gibson this is an adult book and I'm starting with this one because it is a horror book so it is very gory it is a lot um, fair warning, uh, just, tr just fair warning. The reason I included this though is because this was the, probably the first time that I read something that had smut in it and I was obsessed with the smut, the way that it was written. The whole book, the prose in the book is written in a really lyrical and beautiful way and I really loved that. So the story is about this woman who was turned into a vampire by an ancient vampire and basically they take on these other lovers and it's their story and how they eventually get away from this guy. The book starts with her murdering him so I'm not spoiling anything by saying that. The book starts with that and even that was written in a really kind of like erotic and sensual way and I just think that it was done in a really fantastic way. I enjoyed this book a lot. I think about it constantly which is weird, but it does like, it's something that I think about constantly. I'm just like, wow, I kind of want to read that book again. So I do recommend it highly. Then we have One Last Stop by Casey McQuiston. This is also an adult book. Girl rides the train to work every day, meets a, another girl, and that other girl is like stuck in a time loop on that train and has since like the 90s is the gist of the story. I got to read this as an audiobook arc from Neck Alley and I, it's uh, again one of those stories that I just keep thinking about. <laughs> um, the reason that I say on the smuttier side is because there is, you know, I think like two sex scenes that uh, were graphic enough that I remember them, so I'm gonna say that it counts. It is a really beautiful story though, and I think that it is really well done. I really enjoyed the book, so I'm gonna say, yeah, it's a really good book, and I would recommend it if you wanted to read a good romance. So, and then we have Written in the Stars by Alexandra Bellefleur. This is another adult book, and it is a, um, what is it? A Jane Austen retelling. Why are there so many sapphic Jane Austen retellings? Like, Pride and Prejudice specifically. I've seen, like, three or four. During my romance reads, I think I read three or four. Um, I don't understand why there are so many. I've never read Pride and Prejudice. I hate Jane Austen. I don't like those stories. I don't like those books. Probably because it's, you know, historical and romance. But I don't enjoy them, so I don't really know what that's about. But this is modern-day Pride and Prejudice. I think it's Jane Austen at least and our main characters are both women and the romance is you know this is a book it was good but like you can't take it that seriously I think that's pretty much where I was at with this romance where I was like this is silly like it's fun it is a fun read and I enjoyed it but it is silly right at the end of the day it's just like okay like very light-hearted I guess um, of course there's gonna be trauma trauma and like heartbreak and like difficulty because it's a romance book and they have to have something interesting happen but it I wouldn't go into it taking it too seriously why am I including it on my smuttier side of things because I only remember that I listened to the sex scene at six o'clock in the morning while I was getting ready for work and I was like oh my god it's really early for this right now so is it all that smutty in context I couldn't tell you but because I have that drawing memory of it, I feel like I should let you know. I will say, um, with this smut, as well as with this smut in One Last Stop, it is not written in any kind of like poetic, metaphorical kind of way. And I've found that for me, I kind of prefer that. The only exception to that rule being A Dowry of Blood, but that's just because of the way the book in general is written. But the way young adult sex scenes are written, one, makes me uncomfortable because I'm an adult, and two, where's the consent? And three, um, they use all these obscure metaphors. I'm looking at you, Sarah J. Mass. Yeah, those don't, those descriptors don't. First off, I have aphantasia and I can't see shit in my head. So like when you give it some weird fluttery descriptor that's just fucking strange, 
I don't see anything, I'm just uncomfortable. And I think that young adult sex scenes do that specifically so they can kind of get away with it, right? And I get it. I'm not like more sex scenes than young. I read young adult specifically so that I don't have to read smut most of the time. But I think with those these two books written in the star written in the stars and one less stop, the sex scenes are very like the body parts are very clearly the body parts. You don't have to any guess and choose, like you know what they are. And I appreciated that. <laughs> it, it it made them a little bit spicier for me, you know, because my while I don't know like, I, well, I can't visualize any of it. When you're very clear about what's happening, you're very clear about what's happening, right? Okay, so this next one is also in that same boat of, like, very clear about what's happening. However, huge, huge trigger warning because this uh, has BDSM content, concepts in it. Also, this is literally the smuttiest book on the, <laughs> on the entire list, and it is my last book on the entire list, just because it took me by genuine surprise by how much I liked it and how I'm going to be reading the author's other books. Uh, this is Queen, Queen Takes Rose by Katie Robert. This is obviously an adult novel. Uh, I listened to the audiobook because I have no chill. I don't know if I recommend doing that or do it very quietly and not while you're working is what I would recommend. It's very spicy and very good. I am reading the other books though because there's this subplot line that I don't understand and I want to understand and I was trying to explain this to my partner and he was like, yeah, okay, but like he knows me and so he knows that that's probably really the only reason. But I'm considering owning these books and they are literally erotic fiction, which is not my jam. But there's an undertone of romance to it that blooms and I really enjoyed that I thought it was very sweet. Um, but I want to read the other books to find out the rest of the, like, the rest of the plot. This is a, like, part, the last book in a villain's retelling series by this author. Haven't read the others. Um, so, yeah. I feel weird talking about this book. Anyway, those are my recommendations as somebody who doesn't read romance. What did I learn out of my two weeks of reading romance? Uh, probably the fact about young adult smut versus adult smut. It's very different energy. Um, the reason I don't like romance is primarily because I don't like contemporaries and I don't like historicals, so, you know. Um, I read quite a few that were decent, uh, but didn't make it to this list for a varying amount of reasons. I will be including a link to a Goodreads bookshelf down below that will have all of these books as well as some of the other ones that I read during the two weeks of my Romance Reads vlog. I don't know if this comes out first or the vlogs come out first. I think the vlogs come out first, so. Um, we'll see. I will link the vlogs down below if, or vice versa. Like, you know, we'll figure it out. I'll figure it out. Uh, I think that's all though. Uh, that's, yeah, that's it. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you enjoyed my discomfort of trying to explain why I like certain parts of romance and why I don't like other parts of romance. It is what it is. Let me know if you've ever read a genre completely outside of your comfort zone. Um, and if you have any recommendations of romance for me, I'll, I'll take them. I'm now open to the genre. I'm not going to go out of my way anymore after that vlog is over, but I'm now open to the genre. So let me know if you enjoyed this video and I can do some more I like it. Maybe read some stuff outside of my comfort zone and, and re make recommendations afterwards. Let me know if that's something you're interested in. Uh, I hope you guys had a great day. Don't forget to take your meds, drink your water. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like and subscribe and share and all of that. So. I'm gonna go. I will see you guys again on Thursday at 10 a.m. Central Standard Time, and again on Tuesday at 10 a.m. Central Standard Time. Okay, thanks, bye.